here's a quick three-step process on how to factor any quadratic that's actually factorable. The first thing you have to do when you're given some quadratic equation that you have to factor is that if there's something common to all of the terms, take it out first. It's just going to make your life easier. Then you have to look at what's left. If you're left with x squared plus something x plus something, and it's just a bare x squared, then you can use product sum. And I'll show you how to do that if you don't already know what it is. But you may be left with something in front of the x squared, like 2x squared or negative 5x squared plus something x plus something. If that's the case, you're going to have to use a little bit more complicated of a method. I'm going to show you how to use decomposition, but you may be familiar with another method some people use a box, some people use a bunch of other tricks. You can use whatever you want, but I'm going to show you how to use decomposition because anyone can do it. Okay, so let's follow the process and do this for a few different things. The first one that I want to do it for is uh, x squared minus 2x minus 15. Is there a common factor among all the terms? Now x squared minus 2x minus 15. This one's missing an x. There's no 2 or anything here. So there's nothing we can pull out of all of those. There's nothing common to all of them. Oh, next. Are we, do we have a bare x squared? Yes, we do. It's just x squared minus 2x minus 15. So here's how you do that second step. Find two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. As soon as you find those two numbers, you can plug them right in to this. Now let's figure out what those numbers are. If they have to multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. Well, what multiplies to, 50, to negative 15? Negative 1 and 15 multiply to that, but they add to positive 14, so that's no good. But negative 15 and 1. Well, those add to negative 14. That's no good. It needs to be negative 2. What about uh, negative 5 and 3? Those multiply to negative 15 and they add to a hey, negative 2. Look at that. Those are the 2. They multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. Negative 5 and 3. Negative 5 and 3. It's actually that easy as soon as you find those two numbers. Cool, so that one's done. We got rid of our x squared. We've split it up into two separate terms. We've factored it. Okay, let's do this one. Start at the beginning. Is there a common factor among all the terms? Three and two and five, nothing common among those. Is it a bare x squared? Ah, it's not. So we're gonna have to use this thing called decomposition. Here's how you do that. The first thing you do is find two numbers that multiply to this times this. Now this is the only way that this new search is different from the old search. You have to do negative 5 times 3. You want them to multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2. Now I rigged this so that it would be the same thing. Two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2 are obviously negative 5 and 3. We already found it. But because we have something in front of the x squared, we have to do this in a bit tougher of a way. What we do is we write that, la that first term and that last term just as they are. Neg or 3x squared minus 5. And we rewrite the middle term as these two here negative 2x as minus 5x plus 3x. Now see, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, but we've divided it up. We've decomposed it. Get it? And then, once you get there, factor the first two terms. What's common to both of these? Well, not much except for they both have an x in it. 
and when you pull x out of that, you're left with 3x minus 5. Notice that this is each of these terms, but we took away 1x from each of them. Then you factor the second two. What's common to these? Uh, nothing. So it's really just a 1 if it's nothing. And because we weren't able to pull anything out, we're left with 3x minus 5. Now we have 3x minus 5 in both of these terms. So we can pull that out. And what are we left with? Well, when we pull 3x minus 5 out of this, we're left with x. And when we pull 3x minus 5 out of that, we're left with plus 1. And that's the factored form of that equation. A little tougher because you have to decompose that middle term, then factor the first two and second two terms. Want to do a couple more here. Is there a common factor among all the terms? Why, well, yes, there is. There's a common 5. Both of these are divisible by 5. And there's an x in both of them. We can pull out a 5 and an x from both of these terms. When we pull out 5x from this, we're left with just a single x. When we pull 5x out of this, we're left with just 2. We pulled out the x and we pulled out 5 from there. 10 divided by 5 gives us that too. Oh look, we're already factored because there's no x squared left. That was easy. Finally, let's do this one. Is there a common factor among all the terms? 1 half x squared minus a half x plus 12. I don't know. Well, let's see. You know what? I could pull out a half here. And when I pull a half out of a half x squared, I'm obviously left with x squared. When I pull out a half from negative a half x, I'm left with negative x. And when I pull out a half from positive 12, I'm left with positive 24. Now, is a 1, like do I have a bare x squared? Yes, I do. If we remove that half, which we already factored out, we have x squared minus x plus 24 that we have to factor. So it's just a bare x squared. We can use this product sum. We need two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to negative 1. That's the number in front of x. Well, we got to start reaming off pairs of numbers that multiply to 24. 1 and 24, those don't add to negative 1 though, so that's no good. Let me cross it out that way. Negative 1 and negative 24, those don't work. Uh, 2 and 12 multiply to 24, but don't add to negative 1. Uh, negative 2 and negative 12, ah, those, don't mul those don't add to negative 1 either. What about uh, 3 and 8? Don't add to negative 1. Negative 3 and negative 8? Gah, don't add to negative 1. 4 and 6 multiply to 24? Ah, doesn't add to negative 1. What about negative 4 and negative 6? That also doesn't multiply to negative 1. You know what? I've exhausted all the pairs of numbers that multiply to 24. This can't be factored further. And you've got to be on the lookout for that because, you know what, sometimes you just can't factor things. But before you write a bold statement like can't be factored further, you should probably run through all the possibilities like I did. These are all the pairs of numbers that multiply 24 and not a single pair adds to negative 1. That means you can't factor it further. Three-step process. Follow it. Be able to factor anything you want.